drwhiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And I'm here at the wintry Scotland and they do have a lot of stuff here and what is really awesome about uh, Scotland is their castles. I've been to a lot of castles Mm, a lot of them were in ruins, but some of them are kept well sh in well-kept shape. This was is a bit of the younger castles, and it's a yeah a land house, a manor, and it's uh, pretty nice. And it's nowadays it's a hotel and restaurant. It's it's yeah big stone blocks, but yeah a nice place to be. Unfortunately, in winter it's closed, so I can't really walk into it. So. But the history of that, uh, the Tininich castle, begins with um, Captain Hugh Monroe of Tininich. And he tear down, tore down a bit of the old castle, built the new castle, and he actually was very involved in the building. He took steps and measured by steps all the rooms that were a bit as asymmetrical. They are kind of part of the enthusiasm that he uh, put into the castle. He was also the founder of the Tininich distillery that was founded in 1817. He then kept the distillery running, had four stills and then sold the distillery to his younger brother, uh, Lieutenant General uh, John Munro. And he was in, uh, yeah, in active duty. He was a lot of times he was in India and so he couldn't really run the distillery. So he then rented it out in 1850 to um, a few other people and it got sold and closed during uh, Second World War and it was one time the most northern distillery and the only distillery with a telephone up here so pretty uh, innovative there. Um, later it got sold to um, Allied Distillers and then Diageo and now it is still run by Diageo and supplies the distillery, uh, the, the company with spirit for their blends. Most of them is the Johnny Walker and yeah, uh, they used to have four stills. They disabandoned the old four stills and got a new distilling house with uh, six stills. But with the six stills and how the stills are now, I'm going to tell you later about when I visit the still house. So let's get in and find out how the Tininich whiskey is made. The Tininich distillery has a modern hammer mill and hammer mill is different to what we usually see as with roller mills. Roller mills you kind of do more of a coarse grist with a hammer mill that turns around and hammers the, the grain finer and it's more of a flour and the dust that comes out so it's it's much more finer and that gets then into the mash conversion vessel and is mixed with water and this is not not as a, a with the coarse grist you get a different consistency here at Tinini you more have a, a slurry and that slurry is then heated up to the normal temperatures that we see at the mash tons as well or mixed with hot water as, as it is in the mesh tun and uh, the sugars and the starches are extracted and it actually works a bit better than when you have a coarse grist because everything is finer, the water can get everywhere and dissolve the sugars better. So the actual yield, as the distiller says, um, that you get out the sugars is higher. So it's a more efficient way of dissolving it. But when you then have this slurry, that it's a bit harder to get the, the draft out. So you can't really have it like with the normal sieve that you have in the mash tun. You have to have a, a big uh, mash filter. And that is the mash filter here at Tininich. And it's a cloth filter. And it comes in and filters the whole uh, mash through. Then you get the, all the husks and all the bits and everything that's solid out and the clear uh, wort is then uh, siphoned off at the end that is really really sugary so all the sugars are dissolved in the water where the solid bits are here in the cloth filter but then the question is how do you get that thing clean do you have to take out every filter no it can actually open automatically and all the draft is then dropped down and collected there and then pumped out just as usual goes to the farmers as cattle feed and yeah is turned into yeah really good Scottish beef and yeah let's see what that uh, award is then turned into in the next stage 
So the distillery has 20 wash bags. 18 of them are in these nice wooden form and they are beautiful to look at. They're huge. They fill it up with 56,000 liters and they ferment for uh, 76 to about 80 hours uh, with a clear wort. And with that, they get a style that is a bit grassy, oily, so kind of an interesting spirit. They're not going for this highland fruity and all that kind of stuff, but more of a grassy, oily kind of uh, wash. And that is, um, yeah, that is something different. And we'll find that in the taste as well. Um, after that, we have about 8.2, uh, 8.5% of alcohol, and that goes off to the distillation. So this here is the still house of Tininik. Um, give you a bit about the, the recent history of the still house. This here used to be the outer wall. And this uh, is the, are the old stills from the 70s. And this bank here is six stills. And later then they built these new six uh, stills, the new wash stills. Now these stills here are used as spirit stills. The first three stills used to be wash stills, but they have been converted. Luckily for the distillery, they, the shape of the still is uh, nearly identical to the old spirit stills, so they can use it as spirit stills just um, with a minor conversion. They took the watch, gla uh, watch glass out, had to close some other holes in here, but they can use it as a normal spirit still. And they all have the reflux bowl. So this reflux bowl increases reflux, alcohol separation. It gives them a bit of a, they say, they, an oily character. Um, also, reflux bowl makes it a bit lighter. So it's not a heavy spirit, it's a lighter spirit, but oily. And from the, the wash bags, you still have a little bit of a grassy touch to it. So yeah, but we'll find that in the whiskey then later to you know, dissect. Um, so yeah. This is now the bank of spirit stills, six spirit stills. Now let's talk about the wash stills. The wash stills have been added later, so they are quite young. Also, that means they are quite modern. And if you have a big still house like this, you're always looking at energy efficiency. So what they did with the new wash stills is they, first of all, had the same shape as the old wash stills, so the character is not really affected. Uh, they don't have a traditional heating system with steam coils at the bottom, but they actually have an outside heat exchanger where they can heat the, the wash. So they pump the wash out or in a circulation through the heat exchanger and then it becomes really hot and that is just as boiling it inside the, the pot. But it's, it's easier and better because you don't have to maintain everything inside that big pot because that's really yeah confined space and if there's still liquid in it and it's it's, it's really bad to to work inside a pot still that's really not a good job so having it outside is pretty practical and you can do other stuff with it, it as well because if you look at the condensers they have a little bit of a yeah a little bit of a side thingy there i'm not quite sure how it works but it actually it is there for yeah energy conversion so every all the energy or not all the energy most of the energy they take out they can harvest and they can create hot water with it they use for cleaning in, in the distillery so they don't have to have a, a separate boiler for hot water and use energy there they can just recycle the energy from the stills and then we have they can also create steam from that so they can actually make steam from what they um take energy out of the vapor and partly uh, power the wash still. I say partly if they could power the whole wash tail, they, they, they kind of have a energy creation situation that is physically impossible. So you still have to put energy in there, but a lot, lot less energy, less environmental impact. And that's really a good thing. So this is then the wash still side, spirit still side with the, with the old stills. Um, after they come out, it's obviously filled into the cask Unfortunately, I can't visit the cask sites, but um, to try what the character of the distillery is, I will have a little interview, uh, not an interview, a little tasting afterwards. So this was it with the production. Unfortunately, I did not manage to yeah, try the Tininich core range over at the distillery. So yeah, I kind of have to yeah, do that now here. And unfortunately, it's it's been a while the tour has been a while back now and 
it's already in the editing pro process so i now have to do that video of the yeah core range of uh, flora and fauna and in the end i will tell you a little bit more about the yeah the whiskey tour i just did and give you a bit of background tell you a few nice stories about the yeah about the tour and the industry and yeah this here is the only kind of core range from Tininich. It's the Flora and Fauna 10 year old Tininich 43% ABV. And yeah, it's the only one. Flora and Fauna is kind of a, a group of uh, whiskies bottled from distilleries that don't have uh, own bottlings. And it came to the market, or the single malt from Tininich came to the market in 1992. And Tininich just started the continuous production in 1991. So they are quite... Bottlings from Tininich are quite rare as a single malt because it's a, a workhorse for the blend industry. And yeah, let's find out how the... Uh, how the distillery character, or how the, um, yeah, the character inside the whiskey is captured. And yeah, the first thing that you realize, it's a, it's a fresh one. It's a... A fresh one with um, what do you call it? Um, herbs, spices, a bit of a, a citrus freshness. So it's a typical, feels like a typical ex bourbon cask maturation. But the distillery character, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I can't remember that that well because it's now a month ago, uh, or maybe a one month or one and a half month ago. But since I was a distillery, I think the the stiller character was kind of going into the grassy, herby kind of uh, direction. But it's a nice, light, yeah, grassy, herby, citrusy, a uh, little bit sweet uh, kind of single malt whiskey. It feels a little bit like it has a, a, a smidge, a taste of smoke as well. but. That could also be come from kind of other aromatic flavors that happen to the appear in the whiskey. Mmm. A light one. It's a light whiskey. It has a... Uh, you have these grassy, herby flowers in them as well. A little bit of um, sweetness, a little bit of oak in there, a little bit of spiciness in there. It's kind of a, a well-balanced, more in the lighter mm, region of whiskey. So it's not a, a, a monster that has all the flavors that, um, that I've just had before with the American stuff. But it's a, a very light and pleasant, easy drinking yeah, also quite complex whiskey for such just a, a 10 year old from a, a mass producing malt distillery. It's pr pretty nice. I like it. I'm, I'm always a bit uh, yeah sad that you have from these malt distilleries, you don't have a single malt range. Mm. From the supply side, they could easily manage to uh, support a nice core range, but um, yeah, usually the the companies don't don't want to. They just they just don't see the the need for that. But hopefully, uh, we've seen already a few malt distilleries for blends, mass producing distilleries that um, some of them got converted, some of them just supplied it, and um, got more into the single malt brand. But the single malt hype started in the nineties and is still in there. We're still in the single malt hype. Single malt is still the dominant one now uh, for yeah. for the premium brands. And uh, maybe they are just the the late followers. Yeah, so that was kind of it with the Tinini 10 years. Quite a nice thing. Um, if you happen to, to get one, they're not that cheap for a 10 year old. They're more expensive for a 10 year old. It's just that, yeah, it's, it's a, not a, that, that common bottle. Yeah. Let me tell you a bit about the, the, the tour. The tour was pretty tough. It was actually uh, a tour that I thought, yeah, let's just do a, a little week tour, like a, a week of Scotland, fly in on, on Sunday, leave on the next Saturday and do five distilleries. Uh, but uh, that was back in 2020. I wanted to do it in spring 2020, like a small spring tour. 
and uh, that got with all the usual stuff got postponed 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 and now I did it in uh, in yeah winter 2021 so one and a half years later and uh, yeah it also got extended the tour got sucked in more distillery still sucked in more distilleries on the tour so it was 10 distilleries on uh, two weeks where i think i flew in on monday and left on saturday so i had to work on the saturday drive on a sunday because it also included the orkney and it was a tough tour um if you have a tour where you have everything located in one place like the space side it's just easy you just get your airbnb and travel out to all the distilleries every day come back to your airbnb don't have to do anything just save all the the footage recharge all the batteries and just go to bed <laughs> and repeat self recharge in the morning but with a tour that is a, a straight line you always have to change rooms and drive a lot and um, yeah it's just it's it's much more of a hassle if you have a tour where you where you change hotel rooms every day it's it's nice because you see much more if you're on vacation you see much more it's just very nice but it's also demanding um i always thought about you doing, doing a, a renting an rv but i'm always a bit skeptical about the roads and and about the management i'm just not that of an rv guy so I should try it out once but yeah it's it's a bit of a hustle the next one i'm planning is uh oh yeah no i'm doing a week tour <laughs> the next one i'm planning is a week tour hopefully that stays a week tour I, I really put my foot down this time to say no it's a week tour and i have one place where i can reach everything within an hour and <laughs> i said no that's a week tour not that what i did just now that's a two-week tour with a lot of room changes that's not good and yeah so next one will be a week tour to ireland hopefully and the one after that will be a more of a line tour with two weeks and hopefully i can stretch them out a little bit more so I'm, bit more relaxed on the on the distributors i'm not quite sure if uh if you see that on the videos that i get tired with every distiller more tired with every distillery because it's just more stress and more uh, yeah demanding yeah so um that was pretty much it so uh, what i also do like is the the chatter at the distillery is it's it's just when you get to know these people at the distillery day you see it every time uh, I introduce per people that uh, do the uh, distillery video with me, um, how much experience they have. It's just very beautiful. I, I do also have a lot of knowledge and if you get into a chat with them and um, some people are just talkative, they just talk at you. But if you talk back and they realize, hey, that guy actually knows a lot about the the whiskey industry and it's just i've talked to about 100 master distillers and <laughs> when you've talked to 100 master distillers you know about the industry and it's just very cool if, if they see you like yeah that's a, a friend of our, our industry uh, then you get to know a lot more secrets about the the industry i i, I always keep the secrets as in uh, I don't tell them straight away i keep them for a few years and then i tell them about as an anecdote I'm not quite sure how mad many of the stories are, are true that like uh, over the last few tours uh, I, I saw that's this is actually quite true because I saw it with my own eyes that one distillery had 10 artback bottles from uh, barrels casks from before 1980 so it's like <laughs> it's like seeing a, a million dollar vintage car or I kind of a fifty million dollar vintage car. I'm not quite sure how how much is that worth. It's it must be worth millions. So yeah, interesting. And uh, the other one told me yeah that was a I was a guy who uh, was actually a German guy uh, who filled had a, had a cask filled with his spirit and it was a herring cask and <laughs> he called it Witzki. Witz Witz is uh, Witz is a German word for for joke. So it's kind of a joke cask and I it's so really bad from what i remember what he told me <laughs> but yeah there is herring cask matured whiskey it, and it's not called whiskey anymore but uh scottish spirit drink i would i would call it <laughs> and yeah so there's a, a tons of stories out there that are just 
are really, really funny, but uh, the distilleries don't want to have them associated with themselves. So yeah, uh, kind of kind of a cool thing. So yeah, hopefully uh, the situation with traveling and everything will stay good. And I will hopefully do my one week tour where it's five new distilleries from Ireland. Uh, I don't have good videos from them yet. So hopefully we'll, we will be able to do that. And also I'm uh, planning to do more tours. So hopefully we'll have more of that in the future. Yeah, that was it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like the Tinini, then have a look at the, or like to know more about it. There is a, a huge written text on the Tinini distillery on whiskey.com in the whiskey database. So have a look at that if you'd like to know more. Um, yeah, anything else then? Yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.